What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another post game here on Met Central. And today we are recapping the game where the Mets lost to the Marlins in six to four. Before we jump into everything, please be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications so you know I upload or go live. But let's get into it. I like this. I, my blood is boiling right now from this loss because it's just why is it with like why is it that it's just always the Marlins? It's just always the damn Marlins that just own the Mets. It's just the way it is. It's gonna be this way for the rest of my life. I swear. It's just so infuriating. They had so many chances to win this game. Didn't do it. And how about the fact that Sean Manai, and it's days like this where I watch this pitching staff go against some of the worst offenses in the league. This is the worst offense imaginable. Somehow worse than the Rockies. And you let them rack up six runs against you. You're going against Edward Cabrera, who had north of an 8 ERA going into the start. And you get one run against him? You should be ashamed of yourself. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, like, I don't want to hear that losses like this are excused if they win the next three. Like, this is, again, this goes back to the point where I was saying with the Rocky series where, yeah, it's great to win the series, but... These are the type of games where you have to win and you have to sweep these series. Like, I'm sorry, sweet. Losing games to the Marlins at this rate with the record you have is just something you can't do. And to lose in this type of fashion especially is just beyond infuriating. And it's just annoying too because right off the rip, they had an opportunity to blow the game open because Lindor got a leadoff walk, steals second, and then Brandon Nimmo grounds out, which the Marlins just all of a sudden, by the way, just know how to play gold glove defense against the Mets the entire dang night. J.D. Martinez walks, and it's like, all right, maybe you have an opportunity. And Pete Alonso, second half, hits into a double play, and it's just annoying because I thought we were leaving that behind us. But hits into a double play. That's the end of uh, the first there. And then in the second inning, Jazz uh, strikes out. Brian De La Cruz gets robbed at the wall by Jeff McNeil, who played unbelievable tonight. Uh, and that ends up being a fly out there. And then Jake Berger with a fly out. We go to the second inning where Alvarez strikes out. Vientos gets a single, tried to be aggressive and run out for a double. And he got caught there at second to end the inning, or no, Glacies lines out that end of the inning, but he got out there is what I meant to say. Bottom of the second inning, Josh Bell uh, flies out, Lopez with a double, Sanchez with a single, and then Xavier Edwards gets a single, and then Emmanuel Rivera gets a sacrifice fly, and all of a sudden it's two to nothing. Fortes pops out because Shaw Manaya, I mean, he was just, it, this was an ugly outing today. This was just putrid, honestly. Like, there. There's really no sugarcoating it. This was the worst start I've seen him have uh, in a very long time. And it's a shame that it happened against a really bad Miami Marlins offense because, again, this is just not the type of game where this could happen. He was allowing so much contact throughout the entirety of this start. Like, even if he got guys out, it was contact outs. Even if he was, uh, you know, even during at bats, a lot of guys just making contact, fouling balls off. It's just unacceptable. And then you get to third inning. And I know that, uh, you know, Edward Cabrera had the same sort of deal. And it's insane how both of these starting pitchers combined got two strikeouts. But, again, it's just, it, it's just ridiculous that... They couldn't capitalize on uh, Edward Cabrera, but third inning, two outs, and then you get singles from Lindor and Nimmo, an infield hit there too for Nimmo. And then Martinez lines out, and Martinez, this slump is so gross. And I, like, I was really trying to hold out hope that things would turn out of the all-star break, and things could ch still change. I'm not ruling it out that... Like, you know, I said that about Alonzo before, and I'm saying it right now about Martinez. I'm not ruling out that they could start, you know, heating up here in the second half, but it's like, let's get it together here, boys, because it's getting, it, the act's getting pretty old here already If of, uh, you know, some poor baseball from a guy like J.D. Martinez who has been slumping for the past, like, two, three weeks at this point. Like, this isn't just a small slump outside of that one game he had 
um a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago at this point against the Nationals. It's just been eh from him. But then we get to the bottom of the third. Jazz gets a single, steals a base, which the Marlins were just stealing bases nonstop on the Mets. De La Cruz lines out. Berger with a double to make it three and nothing. Bell with a single to make it four and nothing. Lopez uh, and Sanchez ground out to end the inning again. Manaya just cannot like he's just chucking it up in the zone the entire start and just basically get basically throwing batting practice like that's what you would have wanted Pete Alonso to be facing in the home run derby. Uh, fourth inning though, uh, a line out from Alonso. Uh, Alvarez then with a single. Vientos lines out. Iglesias sits into a force. How we go to the bottom of the fourth where Edwards lines out. Rivera walks. Fortes with a single and then two outs, a pop out and a line out from De La Cruz. We get to the fifth inning where Jeff McNeil gets a leadoff home run. It would have been so nice if guys were on base for this, but uh, four to one regardless. And then Bader grounds out. And it's just, again, you had an opportunity here to crack things open. You get Lindor and Nimmo on through walks, and then you have a throwing error by Cabrera on a pickoff attempt. And all of a sudden, you have a chance to bust the game open. J.D. Martinez hits a sacrifice fly, four to two. Alonzo walks, and then Alvarez flies out the center. And I, or no, that was to right. Sorry, uh, I was thinking of the other at bat. Was that that at bat, or was that late? No, that was later on where I thought he freaking hit a home run. But no, that one was the one to right field, um, to end the inning. And again, you missed an opportunity. And Jake Berger, they mentioned all night on the broadcast about how he cannot hit well against lefties. And sure enough, here you go. Here's a home run for Jake Berger to make it five. The two, and then the next three outs uh, from Anaya. Uh, like, I'm also trying to understand what Jeremy Hefner even does. Like, I'm sorry, how is there not one mound visit from him throughout the entire time Sean Manaya was out there? It, it's just always Alvarez leading the charge, and it's just ridiculous at this point. But we get to the sixth inning. Um, Vientos grounds out. Iglesias with a double. And then McNeil gets another home run to make it 5-4. to four. And instead of tacking on more runs, Bader pops out and Lindor grounds out. We go to the sixth inning where Ottavino actually had a 1-2-3 inning, which was very nice to see. Puck comes in, gets two strikeouts, walks Alonzo, and then Alvarez crushes one in the center, which I thought was about to uh, give the Mets the lead. But unfortunately, uh, it was in front of the warning track and Gary kind of uh, played with us there. Mayton comes in, allows a single to Jazz, gets two strikeouts, gets Josh Bell to fly out. Then we go to the sixth inning where, again, they had opportunities. Vientos lines out, Iglesias walks, McNeil with a single, then a wild pitch, and then Bader hits into a force out. And then Tanner Scott comes in and Lindor pops out. We go to the eighth inning where Nunez unfortunately had a, um, a rough outing. Walks uh, Lopez. Maybe it's because I picked him up in fantasy. Maybe I should just drop Nunez for the betterment of the franchise here. But um, then two strikeouts. Rivera with a walk. Fortes then gets a single. Six to four. Danny Young comes in. Throws a wild pitch, but gets a ground out. And then the ninth inning. A one, two, three inning. Like, not even not even close. Tanner Scott was just blowing fastballs by them. Um, What do you want me to say? Other than... A loss like this is just unacceptable. They had opportunities. They went one for seventh runners in scoring position. The Marlins went five for 13. They took advantage of their opportunities. And the Mets just pissed all over themselves. And it's just beyond infuriating a loss like this. But Severino's back out there tomorrow. Um, all I can say is now you got to win the next three. Like, you have to. You cannot split with the Marlins. You just can't. And... It's just ridiculous. Just a shame. Um, now they only have a one-game lead, or they're tied with the Diamondbacks now, actually, in the standings. Uh, and if the Diamondbacks win tonight, if they haven't even played yet, that would... Uh, no, they won earlier. So they're tied in the standings right now. And Pirates half a game back. Audrey's half a game back. I don't know. I don't know. Just annoying, but rebound tomorrow. Like an afternoon game tomorrow. That kind of that kind of stinks. But regardless, that is gonna be it for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. Leave a like if you haven't subscribed. Turn on your notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one.